my name is John Rodriguez, and today I'm going to tell a brief tale of two daggers, namely why and how we've begun to migrate our register Android app from Dagger 1 to Dagger 2. Okay, so register Android is six years old now and has had many features added along the way. To help maintain a modular architecture and keep memory usage efficient, we make heavy use of scoping in combination with dependency injection. We find this to be a very handy mechanism to getting the right objects in place at the right time and only keeping references to them as long as necessary, adhering to the principle of least privilege. Taking a step in, we see that register is organized as a hierarchy of scopes that correspond to the parts of the apps that the user can navigate to. Not surprisingly, most of the app's navigation flow lives in the logged in scope. From there, a merchant can go to various parts of our app from the navigation drawer, say for example, the items applet where they can manage their catalog of goods and services to be sold, or the reports applet where they can review transactions over a given time period. There are scopes for these applets, there are scopes for the separate navigation flows within these applets, as well as scopes for individual screens in these navigation flows. <clears throat> Let's look at an example of how the scope hierarchy changes in response to a user's navigation. So this snapshot of the scope hierarchy, currently scoped to the home screen, corresponds to this screen in the app. And when we click the charge button in the lower right, we arrive at the payment type screen. The equivalent transition in the scope hierarchy starts at this snapshot and ends here. You'll notice that an additional scope, the tender path, is created to account for the wizard-like dialog, and that payment type screen is the current navigational step in that dialog. Let's peek inside another example of a scope. Each scope wraps a graph that knows how to, uh, knows how to create useful objects for that part of the app. When a user traverses from one part of the navigation flow to another, the previous scope is destroyed along with its child scopes. And the subgraph for that subscope hierarchy is garbage collected. Here we see that we are on the signature screen, and in that screen we inject a sign presenter and a tipping calculator, which should be used by the user to sign their name uh, for a transaction. In Dagger 1, scope instances are declared by putting the singleton annotation on the corresponding class. Scope instances live in a given graph and its descendants. For instance, the sign presenter is a scoped instance in the sign screen, yeah, sorry, sign screen scope, not in the logged in scope. The scope is determined by the scope of the bindings that require it as a dependency. To figure out in where a scope instance lives, you have to navigate through bindings until you find the root of the binding DAG, or direct acyclic graph. Finding out where that particular scope instance lives is time consuming. While the sign presenter should only live in the sign screen and therefore be injected only in objects that also live in the sign screen, in practice, mistakes happen and are really hard to detect immediately. This has been a major source of state errors in register as well as memory leaks. This can be compounded by using module provider methods <coughs> instead of annotating classes. Modules are generally used by a specific scope and if we try to inject a scope instance um, in a scope that doesn't have that module, then it will fail instead of changing the scope of that instance. It's more boilerplate and puts the configuration information further away from the object class. On the other hand, Dagger 2 supports custom scope annotations, which can be used in place of singleton. A scope annotation is associated with a component interface such that only one component in a given hierarchy of components can own a given scope annotation. However, rather than go and create a new annotation for each scope in our app, we can leverage the fact that Dagger 2 relies on annotation equality for scope annotations and create a single custom scope annotation with an attribute defining that scope. This makes it very clear in which scope an instance lives, avoiding confusion. Furthermore, Dagger 2 will throw a compile time error if trying to inject a binding in a place that has no knowledge of its scope. As a result, it's now really easy to navigate from a scoped instance to a scope and to find all scope instances for a given scope. Okay, so now let's talk about the migration path. There are about 960 scope instances in register 
many of which are in the root or logged in scope, of course. In addition, there are about 226 screens in register with Dagger 1 modules, or were, and 35 override modules, mostly for behind the scenes development or mock mode features. In light of these, it would be highly impractical to attempt a full migration all at once on a feature branch. Could you imagine rebasing that over the course of a few weeks? That would be a nightmare. We need to be able to migrate incrementally, merge to master, and still ship releases that contain both Dagger 1 and Dagger 2. Not happen in a full migration. But first, before diving in, there is one last obstacle we have to consider. Dagger and Dagger 2 rely mostly on the same annotations module inject provides, so simply adding Dagger 2 to the class path won't work. At the very least, the two annotation processor uh, compilers of the two libraries are going to double the size of, of your code base, uh, the generated classes in your code base, better said, so that wouldn't work either. To prevent this, we'll need to isolate the two. After considering options like having independent Gradle modules or renaming the annotation packages themselves, renaming the Dagger 2 annotations was deemed the safest option, since it'll allow us to quickly differentiate between the Dagger 1 and Dagger 2 configurations from the get-go. Uh, we use the Maven Shade plugin to accomplish that. And so you'll see over here that we have an inject annotation signifying Dagger 1 and an inject 2 annotation signifying Dagger 2. Okay, so what have we done so far? Uh, I'm gonna walk you through a portion of our migration process because it's been a bit uh, convoluted, but uh, what we've done for the bottom-up migration portion is you can convert a leaf screen to Dagger 2 while its parent graph still uses Dagger 1. Let's look at an example. The first step is to convert a sign view and its presenter to Dagger 2 and replace the sign screen module to with a component. That component would normally be a subcomponent of the buyer flow component, but there is no such thing yet as we can see right here. As a side note, you'll notice that we have an additional annotation named with module. We scan this annotation using reflection to load and create an instance of the Dagger 1 module at runtime. One reason why that's handy is for loading responsive modules for mobile and tablet configurations. Anyway, I point it out because you'll see that we use a similar approach uh, to with Dagger 2 components. For the most part, this is pretty mundane. We change the singletons to single ins, providing the necessary scope attributions. Uh, we change the injects to inject twos, and we change with module to with component, which is register specific, of course. The main difference here is the introduction of a component interface. And since we cannot use subcomponent, we will instead use a component dependency interface to express bindings related to the, parent, uh, the Dagger 1 parent graph. But until we've migrated the parent graph to Dagger 2, these dependencies will need to be exposed as entry points on the root graph. Once we get around to migrating the parent graph, we can change component to subcomponent. In other words, we will use at component to annotate only the screens that are on the conversion boundary. Since one of them is considered, or sorry, since each of them is considered the root of its own Dagger 2 graph. Any screens that define scopes that are lower relative to it in the hierarchy will use at subcomponent. Here's one possible way to complete the link between the two worlds. We implemented an interface, taking the Dagger 1 object graph as a dependency, and we call it directly for our parent's presenter. You might also consider using Java dynamic prox proxies to accomplish a similar result. Finally, we can build the Dagger 2 component somewhere down in sign screen world to obtain and uh, inject scoped instances. So far, we've converted just under half of register to Dagger 2. There's still a bit of scaffolding that I omitted for the purpose of this lightning talk, but if you're itching to dive deep even more, come check out our talk at DroidCon SF. Thank you.